It is an 11,000 square foot, massive, beautiful experience, each room designed to uh, educate you and empower you around a financial topic. Not just taking amazing photographs for the Instagram, but also learning a thing or two. Award-winning finance expert and co-founder Farnoosh Tarabi takes us on a tour of her Instagrammable Stacks House Museum. Round one in our visit, the Debt Boxing Gym. Student loans, credit cards, medical bills. So this is a room where we can really let out all of the aggression that we harbor when it comes to having debt. We have gloves you can put on. People love to take photographs with the gloves on, get in the boxing gym, and just show that they can overcome this. And after a workout, it's shower you gotta, time. You have to rinse off, right? So this is one of our popular installations. People love to take really good close-ups of this looking like they're showering in money. This whole experience is about bringing our money emotions to life and also giving people the tools, the education, the experiences to get in the right money mindset. Because managing your money is part math, but it's also part mindset. We have um, a bunch of tips on how to approach investing. So this build protection in your portfolio with cash investments and bonds. It's kind of a surprise. It's a surprise and delight moment. You know, don't try to predict market highs and lows. And if you're going to invest in the stock market, Tarabi says take the reins and ride it out. The lesson behind her rodeo room. A lot of us get nervous about the ups and downs in the stock market. And, you know, it's important to hold on because compound interest adds up. The market's going to do its thing. But if you have a long term goal, 25 years, 30 years to retire with money in the bank, it's important to not give up along the way. So it's your birthday. Gil, what do you want for your birthday? Uh, $100,000. Yes, you need to ask for the money or else you're going to get another candle that you don't want. So you're saying the most successful people ask for it. They ask for it. They're not intimidated to talk about it. They, whether it's asking for a raise or asking your friend for money back, you know, we need to get comfortable talking about these things um, and be our biggest financial advocates. Tarabi says these tips work for everyone but are especially geared towards women in her museum because of the income gap between the sexes. Tarabi says that may be changing soon. Over the next decade, uh, there's going to be a massive transference of wealth in this country from the old generation to the current generation, trillions of dollars, and women are going to be on the majority receiving end of that. So we're going to be inheriting a lot of money, and we want to be prepared for that, to be able to make the smartest money moves that we know. We're both graduating from UCLA next month which is exciting, but also a scary time, you know, going into the real world and um, learning about finances is definitely something that's important and there's not really anything that's really geared towards women in finances. So we thought this event and this place was just a super great place. It's so money. Visit Stack's House at 2018 East 7th Street in downtown's colorful arts district. Where's the money? Where's the money? The museum is open Wednesday through Sunday. Well, his term as mayor has long ended, but former mayor Richard Reardon continues to support and give back to his community. His latest effort seeks to help empower the lives of all L.A. children. Rasha Goel has more. Former L.A. Mayor Richard Reardon and his wife Elizabeth recently made a donation to the Library Foundation for the Los Angeles Public Library's Live Homework Help Program. For him, it's about making a difference. It means that my library, the Richard Reardon Los Angeles Library, is able to help every child in this world to learn. What we really want to do is make this library something that all the children can use. Um, and Ken has initiated so many terrific programs, and we're so proud to be able to help those programs. The Live Homework Help Program is a signature program that provides students with free tutoring online. You can do it from your phone, you can do it on a computer, you can do it in the library, you can do it at home, and you uh, are talking to a professional. There are no volunteers in this. It's a uh, tutor, and they can save your homework online. Tutors can help with many subjects, and all you need is a library card. It could be a poem, it could be a book report you have to write. It's in English, in science, and social studies. The uh, tutors are Spanish-speaking as well as English-speaking. 
What a beautiful gift. In fact, Richard Reardon made the donation on the day of his 89th birthday. And for those of you who may have not known, the Central Library in downtown Los Angeles was actually named after him in 2001. I love the library from when I was a young lawyer in 1956. I used to sneak out at lunch, break into where uh, nobody else was here, and I'd sneak in and spend my whole lunch time looking through books and tapes and everything here in this library. Throughout his term and afterwards, Reardon has been committed to helping the library. Mayor Reardon, during his tenure, presided over our branch construction program, the nation's largest library infrastructure project, which rebuilt and expanded our system from 63 libraries to 73 libraries. He spearheaded the city's Millennium Fundraiser that raised $2 million for library reading programs for children. And he initiated Read to Me LA, an innovative early literacy program for young people. And today, Richard Reardon continues to leave a mark in his legacy as he helps the people of the city. The live homework help program has been around for 10 years and can be found online at lapl.org slash online tutor. Well, it's a way to connect small business owners with valuable city resources. The Mayor's Small Business Summit offered networking opportunities and information to help grow local businesses. We're at the Mayor's Small Business Summit and I'm here to see all the opportunities that I can get through the city of LA and um, meet with other entrepreneurs like myself. We're here to find great small businesses, diverse businesses that represent our city that can support us and work together, grow together. It's a great event to get resources for the current year moving forward to see what the city of Los Angeles is providing as far as loans, lending and things of that nature. Get to meet people face to face and you know, talk to them, get them information, see what they're looking for. So it's great. It's a great thing to gather information. It's a great opportunity. I believe there's over a thousand small businesses that walk through these doors for us to get to know new businesses, ones that are emerging, and reconnect with other businesses that we've worked with in the past and keep growing those relationships. The city has certain contracts they're doing with a lot of developments in Los Angeles. This event is great to get information regarding that. When you're running a small business, you're usually just in your business every day trying trying to develop, trying to um, make yourself and your business better, and you don't really get a chance to see um, what else is out there, what other opportunities are out there, and how other people are running their own businesses. And it's always nice to see people that are in the same um, boat that you're in and get that support. Do you wish there were more trees in our city? Well, that was the topic at a recent tree summit where environmental experts talked climate change and why we need more trees in LA. Today is a, the first inaugural tree summit in Los Angeles. Mayor Garcetti wanted to bring experts from across the country, from uh, the city, community members, uh, advocates of the environment, advocates of trees, experts, arborists to come together and really chart forward uh, the path for making the city sustainable, resilient, and to protect and preserve and plant more trees across our city. Spent by FEMA in the last two years as much as we spent in the last 27 years in this nation. So climate change is real, it's costing us. In next 20 to 40 years, it's projected that days with 95 degrees or more gonna double or triple in Los Angeles. So it's gonna be hot in Los Angeles. So what we wanna do is plant more trees, provide more shade, really provide some space for people to walk from their home to the school to the grocery store and not be hit by the sun. It's a safety issue, it's a well-being issue, and we are really working hard to cool the city. The LA Conservation Corps transforms lives and enhances communities by educating, training, and putting at-risk youth to work. Every year, a luncheon is held to recognize their work and accomplishments.
Today we're celebrating the Conservation Corps, the LA Conservation Corps, our core members, and this year's cohort of Russell Cantor Fund awardees. Well, there are so many amazing groups in Los Angeles, a few impressed me as much as the LA Corps. These young people, day in and day out, take to the streets of Los Angeles, picking up trash, cleaning up alleys, and making our city shine. Faith, as we all know, without action means nothing. And LACC is the action of the faith that we have for this earth and for our people, for the students that we celebrate here who reflect our city. The LA Conservation Corps is everywhere. We're providing opportunities, we're helping transform youth through the transformation of themselves, and we are here to keep this city clean and green and healthy so that all of us here can thrive. Just like a mom, the Corps gives, gives, and gives. Just like a mom, the Corps pushes you, helps you, and supports you. Just like a mom, the Corps only wants the best for you. In times when it's difficult to be optimistic about our future, these young people exude hope and speak to the power of possibilities. The city attorney files suit against TurboTax and H&R Block over deceptive practices. Lake Balboa is a lot cleaner thanks to a group of neighbors, and it's time once again for LA Sanitation's open house. All this in City B. City Attorney Mike Fuhrer has filed lawsuits against Intuit Inc., the maker of TurboTax, H&R Block Inc., and HRB Digital, alleging unfair and deceptive practices in connection with their free online tax preparation services for low-income filers. The city attorney's lawsuits allege that Intuit and H&R Block aggressively market inferior alternative free tax preparation products on their websites, which are useless to all but those with the simplest of tax returns. LA Sanitation and Environment will host its annual 2019 open houses at each of its six district yards in Sun Valley, Northridge, Lincoln Heights, South Los Angeles, San Pedro, and West Los Angeles in a series of free Saturday events through June 29th. Residents are invited to get an exclusive up-close encounter with L.A. Sanitation Truck Fleet. For details, visit LACitySan.org. Folks living near Lake Balboa came out to clean their community. Participants picked up trash and debris. They say they like to do their part to help keep their community clean. One of the components that we're working on today is revitalizing public space where people connect. In celebration of LAPD turning 150, the Hollywood station held a party to commemorate the milestone. This is a big open house here in Hollywood at the Los Angeles Police Department, Hollywood Division, celebrating 150 years of the LAPD. We have the community, we have citizens that live in Hollywood, outside of Hollywood, business owners, politicians, everyone that is part of the Hollywood community has been invited to talk with the officers, to visit the station, to celebrate the, the historic um, background of Hollywood Police Division. I've always found the officers here in Hollywood to be extremely friendly and um, outgoing and wanting to know what's going on in the neighborhood. There's all sorts of fun things, delicious food, performances by local children's groups, uh, and of course, in celebration of public safety and the 300 men and women uh, who serve Hollywood in the Los Angeles Police Department. I'm always kind of thrilled at the, the comfort and the support that I see from the community for the police and vice versa. Celebrate the stories and experiences of Little Tokyo, join a 5K family walk run to help end homelessness, and do you love fresh strawberries? There'll be plenty of them at a local strawberry festival. All this in Things to Do. Looking for a live show in Little Tokyo? Then be sure to check out Unheard LA, the latest installment in the oral history series by KPCC in person. Unheard LA is a celebration of the stories and experiences that give shape to Los Angeles and its distinctive, unique neighborhoods. Don't miss Unheard LA, live in Little Tokyo, Sunday, May 19th, beginning at 5.30 p.m. The show will take place at the Aratani Japan America Theater at 244 South San Pedro Street. 
For tickets, visit kpcc.ticketleap.com. Come join the United Way, the LA Rams, and city and county leaders for Home Walk 2019. Now in its 11th year, this 5K Run Walk event has advocates and Angelinos joining forces to help end homelessness. It's a feel-good cause the entire family can share. So be sure to check out Home Walk 2019, happening Saturday, May 18th at Grand Park on 200 North Grand Avenue. To register, visit homewalkla.org. Love fresh strawberries, food trucks, live music? Then the Strawberry Festival at UCLA Farmer's Market has your name all over it. Enjoy strawberry delicacies or take a field trip to Ayala Farms, where you can do your own strawberry picking. Have yourself a fresh experience at the Strawberry Festival at the UCLA Farmer's Market, happening Saturday, May 18th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Bruins Plaza. For details, visit castrawberryfestival.org. And that's a look at some things to do. That's it for this edition. I'm Yana Kay. From all of us here at LA This Week, thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. See you next time for more of LA This Week.
Madam Clerk, we do have a quorum. Would you please call the roll? Bloomingville, Bonin, Buscaino, Cedillo, Harris-Dawson, Weezer, Coretz, Krikorian, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rodriguez, Ruth, Smith, Wesson. Ten members present and a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you. First order of business. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Mr. Blumenfield moves. Mr. Buscaino seconds. Next. Approval of the minutes. Uh, Mr. O'Farrell moves. Ms. Rodriguez seconds. Uh, let's continue. Mr. President, there is a request to continue item 1A to June 14th. Okay, so ordered, continue. Item 1 is an item notice for public hearing, and there are cards. Okay, then move forward. Items 2 through 13 are items for which public hearings have been held. A committee report has been submitted, posted, and circulated for Council's consideration on item number three. All right, why don't we uh, vote on these items? Uh, excuse me, Mr. President, I believe there are requests to hold items. Okay, Mr. Koretz. Yes, could we uh, call seven, nine, and 13 special? Le we will hold those items at your request. And there's also a request for item two to be held on the desk. Okay, we'll hold that as well. Now let's vote on the remaining items. Members, is that it? Okay. Let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. Ten ayes. Okay, that brings us where? And Mr. Pre President, for items four and five, those ordinances will be held over unless reconsidered later today with 12 members present. Okay, well, I anticipate that we will have 12, and we will uh, deal with those when we reach... Uh, that number of members. So again, where are we? Mr. President, that then takes council back to presentations, items called special or general public comment. Okay, why don't I recognize Mr. Koretz? Let's start off with our presentation portion. Okay, so while Mr. Koretz is coming up, why don't we take up item two? Council item Member two, Bonin. Mr. O. All right, let us uh, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. Ten eyes, one no. All right, Mr. Koretz, the floor is yours. Well, thank you, Mr. President, so colleagues. I'm here today with my colleague Mike Bonin to speak on behalf of our city's annual tradition of declaring May to be Older American Month. At this time, we recognize older Americans for their invaluable contributions to Los Angeles and our nation. Older Americans Month was established by President John F. Kennedy in 1963, although he called it Senior Citizens Month. The name was later changed to Older Americans Month by President Jimmy Carter in 1980. As part of our annual tradition, we include the amazing group Stop Senior Scams that work hard to educate seniors and their families about scams that target seniors, a $3 billion problem. Joining us today from Stop Senior Scams is Adrienne Omansky and their organization, and she has brought an important group of senior advocates with her today. And now uh, I'd like to have Mike Bonin say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Koretz. Uh, thank you for initiating this and glad to join you for this, uh, for an appreciation of Older Americans Month, uh, an important celebration, an important uh, commemoration of a population that continues to grow. Uh, we're all living longer, and so we are going to be seniors for a longer period of time than we would have been 30 years ago. And I want to thank and, and celebrate Stop Senior Scams and Adrian and her troop. Uh, I have been able to work with them for six years now and a little time before that under my predecessor. Uh, they often uh, do performances at the uh, Senior Center right next door to my West LA office. Uh, I've been happy to, to try to help sponsor them and some of the travel they've done. Uh, they have some amazing talents in their troupe. Uh, people who are great actors, people who are great performers, people who are great singers, and they go around the Los Angeles region uh, and in an entertaining way explain to senior, seniors what some of the risks are and some of these scams. 
There are all sorts of scams that are perpetrated or attempted to be perpetrated upon our seniors. People claiming that, that grandchildren have been kidnapped and please just send us a couple thousand dollars and we'll get them out. Social security scams, uh, you know, uh, all sorts of scams about uh, mortgage and all sorts of scams now living on the internet. Uh, people being uh, hoodwinked and, and, and robbed and taken advantage of. And because of the work of Adrian and her troop over the past few years, people have more knowledge and more tools on how to combat that. And I just, I love working with them. I love having them in our district. And I think you're about to hear about how they've been getting some recognition, even in Washington, D.C., where very few good things get recognition these days, but they're one of the few. <laughs> And now one of, one of the side effects of social isolation in older adults is that they can be most vulnerable to fraud and deception. And even the most nimble, sober mind who might be taken advantage of can be too proud to report it when they've been defrauded. That's why we also celebrate May 15th as Senior Fraud Awareness Day. We first declared May 15th as, as this day in 2013 because of the work then council member Bill Rosendahl had done. May 15th was his birthday. He was a staunch advocate for protecting seniors in the city, and so we continue the tradition of working with community organizations. And as this is Older Americans Month, I'd like to invite Laura Trejo, general manager of the Department of Aging, uh, up to speak. Good morning, council members. Um, Thank you for this opportunity to celebrate the over 700,000 older people that make Los Angeles their home. One in 10 Californians over the age of 60 resides in our wonderful city. And this council has led on helping to develop the supportive programs that help making aging in place something that people can look forward to and can be happy in doing. So I thank you on behalf of the older persons, their families, and our overall community for helping to make Los Angeles one of the best places to grow old in the world. Thank you. Thank you. There are events throughout our city and county throughout the year that help inform people. Senior Fraud Awareness Day is important because as the percentage of older adults rapidly increases, they become greater targets. That's why today, even when we celebrate Older Americans Month, we also recognize Senior Fraud Awareness Day in the city of Los Angeles. I'd now like to introduce Adrienne Omansky, who runs an important senior scam award, uh, excuse me, awareness program in, in community centers and has worked with my office and Mike's office for many years. Ms. Omansky works tirelessly to help educate the public on this vital issue. Is there a, a, a film clip we got? Here we go. If you want to see your granddaughter alive, listen to me carefully. Do not hang up the phone. Go to your bank and withdraw $3,000 right now. Seniors and their families are scammed out of $3 billion a year through financial fraud. If you think you've been a victim or a target of a scam, please contact your Federal Trade Commission or the U.S. Senate Committee on Aging. Only you can stop senior scams! Good morning. I first want to thank our film production company, under the direction of Amanda Jacoby, who's here today. Where She's is right she? here. Let's give her a round of applause. Brandon Jimchek also was one of the co-producers, and she has the, um, her uh, editor here today. Here she is. Where's the editor? Meryl. She's Meryl's here. And how this came about real quickly was an amazement to me and to everybody. Amanda walked through our senior center at the Felicia Mayhood 
Senior Center and saw our bulletin board. She contacted me on Facebook and said, how could we help? This was a year ago. They volunteered their time and energy to get this PSA out. And it's our goal to get it into every movie theater in the United States where the seniors go to the matinees. They will be a captive audience, but it will do the trick. Thank you, President Wesson, Council Members Koritz, Bonin, and Rue, and the City Council. Our actors have traveled to bring their peer-to-peer -peer education program to your constituents with the support of your transportation. Along the way, we met older adults and their families and listened to their accounts of insidious scams. We heard about the concerns for their friends and loved ones who were suffering from dementia and were targets of these scams. At the Mark Twain Library, the neighborhood gathered outside our tour bus to welcome us to the community. They listened attentively to our educator, Sandy Megerson, who grew up in their neighborhood. We went to Northridge, Venice, Mar Vista, Torrance, Los Feliz, Westchester, Baldwin Hills, East Los Angeles, Sherman Oaks, South Central LA, Hollywood, and today we are going to Angeles Plaza. We attended senior health fairs sponsored by council members Koritz, Bonin, O'Farrell, and Rue. What we know is everyone's a target. With your continued support, we will achieve our mission to stop senior scams. Thank you to all the council members that invited us into their community, council member Blumenfeld, council member um, Price, and a lot of you that don't even know that we were in your neighborhoods. Council member Cuisar, um, we were there. Um, Harris um, Davis, we were in your council district in one of your libraries. Thank you to all. And we're not gonna be happy until we go to every city council district this year. So thank you very much and we look forward to that adventure. And thank you so much for your over 20 years of advocacy. Uh, you've made a huge difference in this area, and I'm particularly proud to have you as a constituent. Also, we have uh, a couple representatives from uh, our esteemed elected officials, Jade Suh from uh, Senator Feinstein's office, and Jacqueline Hamilton from Congress member Karen Bass's office, my former colleague in the legislature. So, Give them uh, a round of applause. Thank you for all the work that you guys did. So first, Jade, if you'd like to. Yeah. Hello, good morning, everyone. My name is Jade So I'm, a, I'm Senator Feinstein's field representative for LA County. I would like to thank Councilmember Paul Kritz for inviting me here and everybody else. Um, so the Senator couldn't be here today, but I do have a message from her that I would like to read you all. It is with great pleasure that I join the Los Angeles City Council in recognizing the National Senior Fraud Awareness Day. Your tireless advocacy work inspires the U.S. Congress to designate May 15th as National Senior Fraud Awareness Day. As your U.S. Senator representing the state of California, I honor your incredible contributions to supporting countless seniors in the U.S. and wish you the greatest success in all of your future endeavors. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Jacqueline Hamilton, Senior Counsel with Congresswoman Karen Bass, and I'm very pleased to say that the Congresswoman once again this year introduced House Resolution um, on Supporting Senior Fraud Awareness Day. This year it's HRES 339, expressing support for the designation of May 15th, 2019 as National Senior Fraud Awareness Day to raise awareness about the barrage of fraud attempts that seniors face, to encourage the implementation of policies to prevent these scams from happening, and to improve protections from these scams for seniors. Karen Bass is delighted to have the Stop Senior Scam players as constituents in her district, and grateful for all the work you do to help seniors avoid these, and families avoid these awful scams. So thank you very much. Mr. President, I don't know if we have uh, yes, any was, members on the queue. I was waiting for that opening. I'd like to recognize Mr. Rue. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Mr. Koretz and Mr. Bonin, for, for bringing and celebrating Old Road Adults Month and honoring the incredible Stop Senior Scam Group. 
Uh, it was a pleasure to kick off this month with the Department of Aging and Laura Trejo at the art exhibit at our central library and presenting them with the Older Americans Month resolution. Um, the exhibit is just one of the many contributions that our Department of Aging provides to our city. And as stated before, our seniors are the fastest growing population in, his, in our city and it's very crucial that we have resources to support them. But I also want to commend um, the Stop Senior Scam uh, group, theater group. Um, and like you, uh, Mr. Bonin, um, I, they had a, a presentation at Van Ni uh, with the Van Nuys Neighborhood Council uh, in Sherman Oaks. And not only did they do the little clip that you saw on TV, but they went and delved into some of the more taboo or more sensitive topics like dating scams. And it was actually other seniors who performed and it was so well received, so well done. My office still continues to get calls and inquiries from that. So really want to thank the group for your outreach, your innovative outreach by doing these skits um, all throughout uh, the city of Los Angeles. And thank you for everything that you do. And it's such a pleasure to work with you all. And happy Older Adults Month. And, and I, too, want to thank you for all of the work that you do, Laura. It's always good to see you. you. You just be so amazed at how many people just don't understand or recognizing that this kind of thing is going on. So the, the more people that you can make pay attention, the more people that you can make aware, they speak to it uh, about this with their friends, and it helps. So we greatly, greatly appreciate it. And who better to try to protect the seniors than seniors? So we really, I mean, because you guys know what's going on, so you'll be very conscious of this, but you're sharing that knowledge with others. So we're very appreciative and I'm excited that Sen Senator uh, Feinstein's office is here and that our good friend, Congresswoman Karen Bass's office is here as well. So let's give them one more round of applause to let them know how much we truly appreciate the work that they're doing. God bless you all. Mr. Koretz, oh, Mr. Wezar. Quite quickly, I just wanted to thank you for the work you do, and particularly amongst our immigrant and Spanish-speaking community. In my part of the district in Boyle Heights and El Serena, we have a numerous number of seniors who come to our office seeking for help, asking questions about someone who's approached them about this issue or that issue, and we end up realizing it's a scam. And the more you're out there doing this work, um, it's, it's gonna add tremendous benefits to our seniors, and so thank you so, so much for the work you do. Thank you. And ironically, uh, I hadn't seen the video before because I think this is actually the first time it's been played publicly. But my father-in-law, who's who's almost 89, uh, was was uh, I wouldn't say the victim because it turned out fine, but uh, was someone who got that kind of a call. And he's a former judge and very sharp, and he he got very suspicious pretty quickly and asked a, a, a question that they couldn't answer and they immediately hung up. And it turned out none of it was true and, and nobody was jeopardized. But uh, I can see how uh, that would happen all the time. So there needs to be a lot of education on that particular scam as well. So we thank uh, uh, both uh, Laura Trejo and Adrian Omansky for their good work and we'd like to present present resolutions for a senior fraud awareness to Adrian and Older Americans Awareness Month to Laura Trejo.
You need to collect your belongings before you head back. Mr. Koretz, would you like to uh, do items 7, 9, and 13, even though I'm, I'm kind of looking by the pillar to see if I see Mr. Harris Davis. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Koretz, the floor yes, is yours. I, I just wanted to ask uh, a quick question relating to the city food contracts to make sure that each of these contracts uh, include the requirement that uh, they follow the good food purchasing policy and uh, other policies uh, that the city council has recommended. I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, uh, that the zoo concessionaire does. I'm not familiar with the other concessions and whether they, they also will, are focused on following that policy. Is there someone from CAO can, that can answer that? Do we have any? I think we do. Yes. Terry Sauer, CAO staff. Um, could you repeat the last part of your question, sir? Oh, it was just about whether uh, all of these contracts will include the good food purchasing policy and any other similar policies the council has passed or passes in the future? Yes, sir. Um, they were, uh, as, as it relates to the zoo, the RFP for the zoo concessionaire, the good food policies were part of the attachment and a requirement um, to have a vegan option and to provide, comply with the city's good food purchasing policies. And Rec and Parks, as a matter of course, includes the city's good food purchasing policies and any of its concessions RFPs. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Rue. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to, um, I, can't remember, I can't think of the name right now, Mr. Koretz, but um, in committee, uh, the winning proposal had a restaurant that was a vegan restaurant. And I actually made a comment on city, in the committee meeting where I said, Councilman Koretz would be thrilled about this restaurant. <laughs> so I'll get you the name, I'll get you the name. Okay, let's prepare now to vote on the items. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you'd open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Let's reconsider the ords. Do you want to uh, read them into the record, Madam Clerk? 
Yes, that would be it for items four and five. Okay, so let's, the first vote is on reconsideration. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Now let's actually vote on the items. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. All right. And Mr. President, there is a request from members to send item five forthwith today. Okay, without objection. Ms. McAllister, you want to come forward? Uh, so you're going to get one minute on item 1B and then your general public comment. So it's item 1B and then general public comment. Yes, uh, 1B is about the liens that you're putting on people's properties. I think we should place a hold on all liens. Uh, even the new budget that's coming out for 2019-2020 uh, says that home sales for the fifth year Home sales are down. Now you're taking these homes, you're not selling them, they're just sitting out there. And then every two months or so, you put in the agenda here that you want to see if these homes can be used as uh, affordable housing. So we have all of these properties, Now I want a list of every property. I'm going to get that under the uh, Freedom of Information Act. I want a list of all of these homes that you've confiscated from America. Can you tell these people to shut up over here? that you've confiscated from Americans in, in, in the Los Angeles. And a lot of these homes, illegal aliens are living in, okay? So we want them out of those homes and we want you to put a hold on these liens. Can now, you want your general public comment? Uh, yes, uh, general public comment. Um, as you know, I'm also a researcher and I get a lot of information, I know how to find it. And what the, under the California Public Records Act, Government Code section 6250 to 627, 6.48, this is a statutory scheme that provides for the disclosure of public records. Now, the California legislator, they declared this, uh, that every person in California has a right to information. Now, this website that I always go to, the website that I found all the, where you're supposed to be building this HHH housing, and I found out you're not building it, what they've done is put a um, sign in, so I can't even get in there anymore. And I'm going to file a claim on this because you can't do that. All right? You cannot uh, uh, close down a website that had all of the HHA, and I still have a list. I know where they are, but the public should be able to get that. And a lot of things that you're doing, you're trying to hide information now that you know you're under the investigation of the FBI. But it's too late now, okay? The, the, we know what's going on in this council, and I suggest that you stop trying to hide information because I'm going to get the information. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's get uh, Mr. Spindler. You get, he gets one minute on 1B and then it's general public comment. Thank you for starting my clock late, motherfuckers. So what you got here is this motherfucking CD5 lean for courtesy of the Jewish Republic it's of Encino. It's 1B, it's 1B, Mr. Her uh, Mr. Uh, uh, yes, 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 my, my AKA is Herman, but I'm nigga foo he. Stay on the CD3, subject. CD3, y'all, that's a Bob Blumenfield motherfucking lean, Lurleen Avenue, 2,000 fucking dollars. I talked to my friends from the Pasadena City Attorney's Office and they have conferred that no, this you is have an to illegal stay on the topic. Lead. It's on the an topic. illegal lead. The attorneys are saying it's illegal. No notice. Please waive all charges. Gilbert Cedillo will now step in as intermediary for that piece of shit by Bloomingfield. Where the fucking lead? Okay, let's give Where him his one lead, minute. So, you got your ass kicked. That's right, Heather Repenning, that piece of fucking shit, got kicked in the fucking ass by my good friend Jackie Goldberg, my favorite lesbian. Yes, let's give her a hand. That's right. Is Jackie Goldberg manned up? That's right. That's right, Monica Rodriguez. Your criminal colleague on the Board of Public Works, Heather Repenning, Gave up a job paying $150,000 a year because Mayor fucking Garcetti promised her a board seat on the board of the LAUSD and he lied. 
But we went out the community. They said, Wayne, and I said, yes. And they said, who should I vote for? I said, vote for Jackie Goldberg. I was out there campaigning every fucking day, knocking on doors. We kicked your ass, Mayor Garcetti. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your time's expired. Thank you. Mr. Sachs, are you still around? You have, Mr. Sachs, you have items 1B, and then you have one minute for general public comment. So item 1B, and then general public comment. So I have three minutes. You one minute on this item, and then you'll have there's one minute items, for general public here. comment. Oh, thank you. Okay. So, uh... Liens. You know, one way to eliminate liens is if you turn neighborhood councils into neighborhood homeowners associations. Eliminate the neighborhood councils and become a homeowners association, and then you have control over your neighborhood. You have control over your neighborhood because neighborhood HOAs, homeowners associations, they have their own separate set of rules, and they're not conditional based on what the city wants or the city says they're based on your opinion in the Neighborhood Homeowners Association. So if you want to eliminate liens and you want some things done in your neighborhood, create a homeowners association. Because on top of all that, when you're a homeowners association, then you can ask the county for assistance and they can't turn you down. So if you need money, ask the county. Homeowners Association, that's the rule. Let's give him his Welcome one Welcome to minute. Western World Day 2. Was at Public Works earlier, went to use a pen to fill out my common cards, and much like this city council, it didn't work either. Do you have love bugs in Western World? Are there love bugs in Western World? The city, county, the city and the county are now paying almost $1,000 per Brown Act violation. I found that out from Knuckle and Chuckle. The two resident employees of L.A., it could be the city, it could be the county. But $1,000 per Brown Act violation. You know, they made over $10,000 yesterday. One more budget hearing for the mayor's budget. But, Mr. Kikorian, you made 30 changes without discussion. So whose budget is it? Why don't you turn around and ask, answer that question? La. Oh, by the way. Does your love bug go beep, beep, Herbie? Beep, beep. Ah, uh, beep, beep. Herbie, you're not answering. Say something. Thank Time you. is up. Thank you. Okay, let's go to Mr. Herman. Mr. Herman, you have items 1B and then your general public comment. One minute for each. I've been doing this for 10 years, my niggas. I know where I'm at. Off of 6970. Lower Line Avenue, nigga, I know where I'm at. All along, since that 1,972 motherfucking dollar lien was unconstitutional when you never send a registered letter to the family, a homeowner, and the property, and you enforce these rules on the liens, why do you do this to people, you all? Are you all crazy like us normal people? Why do you do that, Herman? I don't fucking know. All I know is I'm extorting money because we're in a deficit. But I keep telling you, Mr. Bloomfield, tell you, tell you, not tell you, nigga. You got to represent. Otherwise, people's rights are violated. Let's give him his one minute for general public comment. This is what I think of our budget. This is what I think about threat management unit. This is what I think. But if I feel this way, if I could do it, if I would do it, if I'm not gonna do it, you can't put it on me. That's why the Jews put Christ on a cross. No, they put him on a tree. No, the Romans put him on a stake. And now, 42 U.S.C. 1983, I'm representing the U.S. 395-444-KKK. No fucking place like home. H-H-H. -H -H. Because I can't afford to live in an apartment. I can't afford to live in a condo. 
And fuck you, Kevin Newsom. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Herman. Mr. Previn, are you still around? You have item 1B and then your general public comment. Gets a minute for uh, each item. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's Eric Previn and I just got here, but uh, yes, I, I'm still here. Now, um, I just want to thank Koretz for removing his lien because now it's squarely a Blumenfield lien. And Blumenfield uh, can lean on a constituent as well as the next guy, and we certainly appreciate uh, that, that that's what he's doing. The only, the only question is that during a hashtag national disgrace homeless crisis, uh, it has come up, should building and safety be uh, doing this kind of thing, or should we be going after the ones that are always hard to track and people routinely announce that they have been uh, not noticed or that they had already paid and we just keep hammering them. Now, in my constituent community last night, Mike Fior came out and he addressed a crowd of 200 angry residents uh, and one of them residents pulled me aside and said, can you get LD, uh, LADBS to come out to our neighbor? We got a guy developing a giant thing that how it got approved, nobody knows. But the older people are being like possibly suppressed. So I will speak with the, the chap over there about that in detail Thank later. Thank you. Let's sir, give him his... Yes. Sir, what can I say? You are the mayor, okay, but it's not going to work. The budget needs to be a little bit more transparent. And I, I know that uh, Gregorian is working hard, but it, canceling multiple hearings is just weird. Now, we know you got to come up with the $45 million extra as of 2022 to get the pension liability uptick because folks are living longer, thank God. But we've also got issues over at the assessor just announced this morning that the property roll has gone up by 0.08% from their estimate, so it's 0.572, so not as much extra money for the supervisors. The supervisors, for, your, for the information, were, were lathering one another up about the possibility of a split role, which, as you know, means that commercial property tax would be a little higher, residential, I mean, residential, you know, the balance will be adjusted, and they would be, reap some money, so they leaned in real close. It was almost like um, the HUD discussion, uh, A4, two weeks ago at the Board of Supervisors. At the very end of the meeting, you should listen, sir, because you got Peter Baker, or Mark, whatever his name is, the guy from uh, Lhasa, and also Phil Ansel. Th spin it. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, Mr. Previn. Okay, that ends multi. Let's go to uh, Ms. Carson Klein. Okay, jo Joanna Agu Aguilera, Teresa Flanagan, come forward. April Papilli, Dexter Harris. Yes, ma'am, identify yourself and you're welcome. Hello, I'm Joanna Aguilera. I'm coming from Arms, Los Angeles. Um, it is important that we keep our communities safe and keep our oil industries and employment opportunities strong. We believe that we can meet both goals without sacrificing one or another. We can draw a safety and insert of regulations and implements. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi, my name is Teresa Flanagan. I'm with Arms of LA. We work to assist at-risk youth, vegetarians, the homeless, and anyone in need of a second chance. The jobs created by the oil and gas industry benefits people from across California, across many device, diverse ethnic and class backgrounds, including individuals who want to have a good paying middle class job. Don't eliminate these good paying jobs for local residents as well as for potential future workers in the industrial such as members of our organization. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please identify yourself. Hi, my name is April Papilli, and I just want to thank you for doing an amazing job at running our city. I'm here with today with Arms of Los Angeles. I just want to talk about the oil industry offers economic opportunity for many who might otherwise have limited professional opportunity options. Workers who do not have a college degree have a hard time competing in today's economy. But this industry offers living wage jobs for those without a higher education degree. More than seven and in 10 oil industry workers have college degrees. These are workers who would otherwise struggle to find jobs that can meet basic needs. 
We therefore, we urge you to consider the economic consequences of the proposed buffer zone and oil operations. Please, please, we urge you, fight to keep these career options open for many of our community members. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good morning, men and women of Los Angeles City Council. My name is Dexter Harris. I'm a native of South Central Los Angeles. I'm a single parent of five daughters. I've been a rideshare driver with Uber and Lyft for over the last four years. Now, over the past year or so, pickups have slowed down tremendously, and the rideshare companies have cut down on our pay. And the access of drivers is on the road, which also decreased the numbers of pickups per drivers. Companies like Firefly give me an opportunity to maintain my income to support my family and I when rideshare driving isn't making a cut. I've been an independent contractor with Firefly since July, and my observer, observance as a driver for Firefly has been no more distracting than a cell phone or a lift light on the dashboard, a TV hanging from a car ceiling, or a commercial billboard advertising. But it's not just a source of income for independent contract, but it also provides a way for beginning entrepreneurs as myself to have my business advertised without breaking the bank, so to speak. Thank you for your time and let me speak on behalf of my community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Elizabeth Nichols, please. Anyone else sign up for public comment that I have not called? Okay, Ms. Uh, Nichols. Good morning, council Good morning. members. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Nichols, and I'm also an Uber and Lyft driver, and I do the, have the digital advertising on top of my car. Um, this income is very important to me specifically because not only is that my only income with Uber and Lyft, but I help support my daughter and her six kids. So it's really important that that extra income is there every month. So if she needs any assistance with extra food, a bill or anything, I can just, that's money that I can give to her without taking away from paying my own bills. So it's really important that we have that there and we would appreciate your vote on that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Anyone else here that I did not call? Then, Madam Clerk, that concludes uh, general public comment. So let's vote now on item 1B. Please open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 15 ayes. Thank you. That brings us where? Council has motions for posting and referral. They are posted, they are referred. Um, announcements, members, announcements. Mr. O'Farrell? Oh, then let us rise for adjourning motions. Let us rise for adjourning motions. I'm looking, uh, Mr. Buscaino. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. President. Myself and um, Council Member Wiesard would like to adjourn in memory of Mario Ernesto Martinez, who many of us know and have worked with through his involvement with the Gang Alternatives Program. Mario was born in El Salvador in 1968. He was the second of four siblings. In 1986, he immigrated to the U.S. along with his family and settled in Los Angeles. Mario began working for the Harbor Area Gang Alternative Program, GAP, in 1997 as a graffiti cleanup crew supervisor. He was only one of six employees at the time and was the junior member of the staff. In 2000, he was promoted to graffiti removal manager, focused on improving GAP and their services and made the Harbor Area the best example of effective graffiti abatement in the city of Los Angeles. Mario eventually led a group of over 30 workers and was named director of community cleanup. He created an efficient and respected department that elevated the entire organization. He also helped make GAP the biggest subcontractor for the city of LA, serving Harbor, Watt, South Los Angeles, and downtown Los Angeles. He was diligent about improving himself as well as his department. He put extra effort into professionalizing his English language skills and soon mastered writing and speaking in English equal to his native El Salvadorian Spanish. He attended community college, obtained his GED while working, and in 2005 he started attending Cal State LA where he obtained his Bachelor's of Business Administration. He was dedicated to his job, his family, and his community. And Before he passed away, he was seeking resources to help repair a bridge that has collapsed during an earthquake 
in his home country in El Salvador. Uh, he passed away too soon on uh, May 6. He was the longest serving member of GAP and uh, his legacy will live on for many years to come. I've had the, the um, fortunate, um, to, I was fortunate to work with Mario as a senior lead officer and um, he was very proactive um, and efficient and effective. And every time, I mean, just every time he called, he just jumped on uh, the graffiti abatement um, requests through uh, when I worked at Harbor. He will dearly be missed and uh, all those who worked with him um, count as a privilege to have known him and share his fr friendship. He is survived by his three children from his first marriage, Natalie, Mario, and his youngest 17-year-old, Vanessa Martinez, two brothers and a sister, and his wife, Blanca, and daughter, Catherine. May Mario Ernesto Martinez rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wizar. Thank you, Mr. President. If I could add to that, and thank you, Mr. Buscaino. Our, our staff wanted to send our deepest condolences to his family. An incredible worker, uh, responsive on weekends, responded to emails, texts. No matter what time you called, he was there. Someone who believed uh, passionately in the work he was doing. And particularly in a neighborhood like Boyle Heights, which uh, was once called the gang capital of the country, um, there's been a lot of graffiti. Uh, and uh, it, it shows that when the person is committed um, and it really cares about the work they're doing, uh, the result you get. But more than that, our staff loved working with him as an individual, as a person, who he was, humble yet hardworking and always willing to lend a hand. I once shared a story with him about how growing up in Ball Heights, I grew up in front of a bridge and there was some graffiti there that had been up, it was up for 10 years. I mean, I have that emboldened in my memory, in my brain. You just see the same graffiti for 10 years. And I mentioned to him how I appreciate the work he is doing. And he would go out, particularly to that bridge now, and make sure graffiti was down all the time uh, after I had mentioned that story to him. So uh, we would certainly miss him. My staff, uh, in particular, wanted to send our condolences to his family and to thank him uh, for being a great individual, great human, and for the work he did for the city of Los Angeles. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm still looking to my left, Mr. Koretz. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to adjourn uh, a little bit belatedly in the memory of philanthropist Jake Farber, who died earlier this spring at, at the age of 94, but I became aware of it uh, more recently. Uh, it's been a painful last few years uh, in the Jewish community because we've witnessed the passing uh, of many of the pillars of our community because they have uh, reached advanced age. Uh, individuals like Max Webb, Jonah Goldridge, Stanley Hirsch, and Jack Nagel and Jake Farber is now among them. Jake Farber's selfless and tireless support and dedication to a wide range of Jewish community and Israeli causes uh, earned him, uh, along with his wife Janet, uh, the nickname Sadaka Heroes, which loosely translated means heroes for their charitable work. He was born in 1924 in Los Angeles into a poor Orthodox family and raised in Boyle Heights. His father died when he was eight and his mother worked as a seamstress to support Jake and his younger sister. During World War II, he was drafted into the US Army shortly after graduation from Roosevelt High School. And upon his discharge, he enrolled in USC under the GI Bill and gradu graduated with a bachelor's degree in accounting. He married Janet Alpert in 1950 and soon started working in her father's scrap metal business, Alpert and Alpert Iron and Metal. Together with his brother-in-law, Raymond Alpert, Farber grew the company to become one of the premier metal and recycling businesses in the nation. As his wealth and position in the community grew, Farber dedicated himself to a large number of Jewish causes, always in partnership with his wife, Janet. Jewish Home for the Aging, Builders of Jewish Education, De Toledo High School, APAC, and the Pico Union Project were among many, many others. In addition to his concern for domestic organizations, the Farbers were ardent supporters of Israel and Israeli causes and traveled to Israel more than 50 times and were passionate supporters for more than 70 years, even before the founding of, of uh, the State of Israel. Among the Israeli projects that benefited from the Farbers' involvement was the Yemen Ord Youth Village for at-risk young people and uh, at its 2017 ba banquet, the Farbers were lauded for their nearly 70 years 
of sharing a passion for Israel. I had the pleasure of, of working with Jake on occasion on Israeli and Jewish cultural events um, and uh, many other uh, uh, charitable endeavors. And as the Los Angeles Times noted in his obituary, Jake will be remembered as a loving, warm, and supportive man who provided his family a true role model of how to live a moral and ethical life, how to give those less fortunate uh, uh, some opportunities, and as a leader who combines skills and business with the wisdom of a true mensch. Uh, the Farbers passed on their values to their three children. Son Howard is a member of the De Toledo High School community. Daughter Rochelle Cohen currently serves on the board of the Federation and daughter Nadine Lavender is active in Korea LA, a children's literacy program. In addition to his wife and children, he is survived by eight grandchildren and one great-grandchild, and may he very deservedly rest in peace. Thank you, Mr. Corrette. So now I'm looking to my right side. Any adjourning motions to my right? Seeing none, members, this meeting is adjourned. I'm Dr. Shen. I'm acupuncturist and an herbal expert. When I was 18 years old, after graduate high school, I followed my grandfather to learn herbal medicine and acupuncture because less side effect and it works better. And more and more people like herbal and acupuncture. The TC herbs in the house, we 